this is the um, sublime shell that we're going to be focusing on today with tips and tricks for sewing a pretty tea top. So let's say welcome to Diane. Hey, Diane. Hey, Joanne. It's great to see you. So great to see so many familiar names in the chat. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah. I've been a, a you know a home sewer you know, most of my life. I learned uh, at the knee of my grandmother and great aunt, like I'm sure a lot of you, in addition to home ec class and junior high and, and other things. Um, and I, I do, I did create this this pattern line for mature figures. I, I felt really strongly that there was a, a place in the world for us. You can make, as you mentioned, all the adjustments in the world that you want to a commercial pattern. But the truth is, your body just changes quite a bit. Absolutely. Yeah. And almost all fashion that you see in the stores and almost all sewing patterns are based on this mature, um, this um, youthful hourglass figure. So this the figure that you're the stereotypical figure that has a, a proportion. You can tell I'm quite an enthusiast about this. I could go on for some time. But there was one other thing I wanted to show you that I think is very um, telling. When I, I'm gonna just hold this up. When I was first started studying pattern making, um, we made a, what's called a sloper. And this is just a, it's a cardboard thing that you make um, based on measurements. And the measurements are the measurements for the typical hourglass, US size six hourglass figure. And okay. if you look at this, this is the, the front bodice. You can see this looks like every bodice, front bodice you ever saw. So that would be what what commercial patterns, what we would call mm -hmm. like big four, would be yes. standardized block that everything else is coming from that basic block. That's right. And you can see that the back, they think that the back is perfectly straight and you can see that the waist goes in a little, right? And here's what the style falcon one looks like. Wow. And I and I the couple things to draw your attention to. Um the, the arm side is, is much deeper because we tend to carry more flesh also on our upper arms as we get older. And and because of the shaping of the back, you may have a you know a little curving like this. Yeah. So there's there's shaping back here. There's also a, a dart, you know, typically in a traditional sloper, there's a, a dart in the in the shoulder and it mm -hmm. is faint, it is pointing toward that shoulder in that back area, which tends to be where the fullness is, mm -hmm. whereas on the youthful hourglass one, it's in line with the spine. It's hold, it's it's shifted yeah. to where it actually needs to be for now instead of where it was before. Yes, I, I like to just use the um, the iron-on interfacing. It's very mm -hmm. lightweight. Sometimes it's called a tissue weight. It's very light and floaty. You don't you don't want something that's really stiff. Like um, this is the kind of interfacing for a collar. And you can see how stiff and sort of papery that is. Definitely don't want that. Exactly. You want something that's soft and floaty, featherweight or lightweight um, for for the basing. And the other thing we were going to talk about, I think Joanne was under stitching. So uh, if you're if you're sort of a beginner, or you haven't done a lot of garment sewing, you might be better off with the binding. If you if you're especially if you're a quilter or something, where you you're familiar with the concept of binding or to make, I don't know, people make um, place mats and all kinds of stuff, right? Um, but if you do the facing, as I as I mentioned, I showed you this three piece facing and it and it sits on the inside so you, you don't see it. You need to do what's called understitching, which is basically where you're going to sew the facing down to itself through its seam allowances. And you need to do that so that it, it will help keep, see how nice this lays? Yes. Right? Yes. And the understitching basically tells it stay put. 